So I think we're live, guys. Can we say hello? Let me know what you're about. So today's match, Jack Lazowski, Michael White. Quite a tasty match this, actually. So I think Michael White's currently a top up player, isn't he? Tour. Jack Lazowski, top 16. So Michael White's in here. Balls are quite nice. You've got all the reds sort of open by the pink spot. Black is stuck on the top cush. Oh, bit of movement on that shot by Michael White. He did uh, manage to drop in the end. Uh, he's played the pink off the spot to run into the reds below. I think he might be a bit unlucky there. Not nothing. Yeah, he's playing safe up into bulk. So current table, six reds all sort of open round pink spot. There's one red just underneath the green in bulk. Jack can't actually see that in a minute. But it will go into the yellow pocket and the right centre pocket so it can be quiet. If you're going back into bulk, you need to play quiet. Precise uh, positional shot here. He's gone for a pot. Missed it. White's come back into bulk. Kissed the green. So now Michael White can actually see the red into the left middle. So 
miss it's not Jack not not an easy shot but I think he'd pop this though which he does Better rename the stream actually. Glenn, how are we doing, mate? Uh, Q-Ball's been a bit of a naughty boy since uh, the last stream. I don't know. If, I think you were in the stream actually last time, and it went went dead, didn't it? Um. Jack's missed a uh, quite simple straight red with the rest there. I don't know if you're actually watching this, Glenn, but it's on Matchroom Live. Um, but since my last stream, it, yeah, it got removed because of copyright. So um, got a bit of a slap wrist off YouTube. They deleted it and they gave me a copyright strike. So I've been like in talks with them since asking why. Cause I thought with it being a free to air service, I could stream it. But anyway, they gave me the um, contact details of the people that um, put the restriction on the stream. So I've been chatting to them, asking them to lift the restriction. They said they will if you stop streaming in the Russian territory. <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ, man. Don't want to mess with the Russians. So yeah, they've lifted it, and I'm just just to be safe now. I'm not going to show the footage. I'm just going to do watch-alongs like this, really, and hopefully other people are watching it on the. And just have a chat, basically. Um, I don't think someone's grasped. I think it's like an automated, like bot or something that searches through live streams and that. Because I've done loads before and it's not been flagged, so I don't know whether someone's reported it or not. I'm not sure, but you basically get three strikes and then they delete your YouTube. So I got one strike, but once you get a strike, you're not allowed to stream for 90 days unless you get that restriction lifted. So I was going to do a stream yesterday. Was it no Sunday? Yeah, Sunday, sorry, yesterday. And I um, went to go and do a live stream and it wouldn't let me. But anyway, it's sorted now. Michael oh, White's missed another one. But yeah, I won't be able to stream much after like today or tomorrow because um, my laptop's going in for repair. The battery on it, um, I don't know. Once it, it's fine if you're running it off the power cord, but as soon as you um, run it battery wise, it's just it won't even give you warning. It'll just turn off at like ninety percent, sixty percent, just very random. They'll be away for two weeks. Yeah, Glenn, it's quite a good group, this, isn't it? Jack Lazowski. Graham Dot.
Yeah, they're picking it up on Wednesday, so I won't be able to do any streams for the German Masters. They say maximum two weeks. It might be a week, but I just wish they could have sent me a battery and me replace it, but must not reach the middle. Oh, Jack. Jack's probably a bit rusty, actually. Not played, has he, since um, that Grand, World Grand Prix final? You actually watching this, Glenn, then? You're on Matchroom Live. Another way of watching, um, I've got a Bet365 account. So if you log in there, as long as you've got money on your account, you can watch all four games, actually. Let's have a quick look what the other matches are doing. Michael White's 1-0 up. That's a bit of a surprise, isn't it? Zach Short, he looks like he's going to take the first frame. It's Graham Dot. Luca Purcell. Looks like he's going to take the first frame. And the first frame between Andrew Higginson and Jackson Page is neck and neck there. I've actually put a little accumulator bet on this. I've gone for Andrew Higg well, all the favourites, Andrew Higginson, Luca Purcell, Graham Dot, Jack Lazowski, but I should learn my lessons really, because I never whenever I bet on snooker, unless I'm finished there. Whenever win. TP, welcome back to the stream, mate. Don't know if you caught it earlier, but um, during the last stream, I got a copyright strike. So, just I don't want to risk getting the channel deleted. I've worked hard to get to like 3,000 subs, took me a couple of years, and all the hard work and videos I've done, it'll be a bit of a shame if they delete the channel. So, I'm not going to be showing any matches now. Is his technique a bit nuts, is it? I've not actually seen him play, you know. I'll have to jump on it. Yeah, TP, it's a shame, but... It wasn't so much... It wasn't really World Snooker either that put the copyright strike on. It was... Um, it was some sort of anti-piracy company. I don't know whether it's an automated thing or someone's reported it, but they asked me to delete it, which I couldn't at the time because YouTube had... Um, not let me do anything with it they'd put like a just hidden it basically i couldn't get it in my videos or anything until um the people i was speaking with they said they'll lift the restriction as long as you delete the video and stop streaming in the russian territory uh don't want to mess with the russians do you Yeah, it's a bit weird, really, how some channels, like, don't get anything and still allowed to upload videos and that, and then others get punished. It doesn't seem to be, like, a consistent thing. Like, Dewey Snooker Vlogs, he does, he, I know he's got loads of channels, so if one goes down, the others carry on, don't they? But I know he's not live streaming this event, he's basically just uploading the matches. Evenings. Midnight Rider, welcome back, mate.
Did you like that little video, Glenn, of the old unboxing? Quite enjoyed doing that one, to be fair. It's a bit tricky sometimes, though, when you, you, you like, you've got your camera in front of you and you're sort of basically hugging your bloody camera. It's um, a bit tricky sometimes. No, basically, I've got a good relationship with Sentry, actually, since since I reached the 1,000 subscribers. I just reached out to him, asking if they'd send me some tips for giveaways. And, um... I was going to say, yeah, and they sent me some back then, and since then, they, they do send me quite a lot, to be fair. When you think about it, the 20 quid a box, six boxes, so that's 120 quid retail, and then the chalk's 15, so that's 135 quid. All right, it's not costing them. I'd be surprised if a tip's costing them more than, like, 20p or something to make. But, um... I must have over 200 quid's worth of Sentry stuff here now, just ready for giveaways and that. But, um, TP, yeah, no problem. Um, don't mind sending tips out to people that, you know, are in, you know, genuine and interested in trying one. I sent a whole box to Matty V. He's like a regular on the channel. Been, subscriber since early days and always comments on videos and stuff and he's over in finland and he couldn't um, actually source him over there so i sent him a box but yeah if you're interested i forget where you're from now tp i know you're a regular you in england or uk So yeah, next time I go for a game, I'm going to try that Sentry Talk, York. Now you're in Belgium. Yeah, no bother if I... Um... If you send me details on Twitter, I'll send you a tip. Just let me know um, which grade you want. It's the German Masters, the next big comp, yeah. It starts on Thursday, I believe. It only runs for four days. They cram it all in, don't they, the German Masters? But Midnight Rider, I'm not going to be able to stream any watch-alongs for that event because I was just saying to uh, Glenn that my laptop's going for repair on the... Uh, well, they're collecting it Wednesday. So... But the whole reason I did this is because I thought I was going to be not able to stream for 90 days because of that copyright strike. <laughs> yeah, um, I managed to get that resolved. So. But it's in the warranty, so I might as well get it done rather than pay for a new battery at a later date. and cost me, so... Um, send us an email then. Uh, yeah, looking forward to the shootout, TP. You send, um, one sec. Yeah, I'm sure Eurosport are covering it midnight. It's a big event, isn't it? TP, if you just um, pop us an email to that address. That's Snooker League I play in, Conway Snooker League. So I pick up some emails, so... Send me what you want and sort something.
Anyway, going back to this nuke, I'm just chatting away here, chatting nice nonsense. Um, Midnight, are you actually watching this? You got it on um, Matchroom or? I know Matchroom only show one one match, but you can catch the other three on any betting sites. You don't even actually have to bet, just deposit a bit of money in. I think Bet365, you've got to deposit a tenner. Watch them all then, as long as there's money in your account, you don't actually have to bet. Yeah, TP, enjoy your practice, mate. I'm hoping to get a game tomorrow, to be fair. Might actually stream tomorrow's um, match, me and Ben. Go in the morning, I think. Yeah, matchroom.live, it's free if you sign up. But it's really good for the Championship League, which is on in February. See you, TP. Yeah, Midnight, if you sign up to that, because they show the two two games of the Championship League, so you never miss one, really. You can pick which one you like and run with it. Yeah, Glenn, so what kind of standard are you? I know you know your stuff, like, you quite clear, clearly know the game, because just from comments when we're watching games and that, you know the shots. So. What kind of standard? What's your highest break, etc.? I just struggle with consistency, like, because... Went for a game, was it a week or so ago? Don't stream every time I go to Ben's for a match, but... Um, didn't play great, and then suddenly, like, had a 50 in one frame, and then the next frame had a 41. And... Uh, I just find that... In practice, when the balls are open, you can quite easily make sentries and then frames just different kettle of fish, aren't they? One, two, four in a match. Well done, that's really good uh, standard, isn't it? Me and Ben are trying to do, um, we don't do it all the time. I've, you know, if we're not playing well, we'll just suddenly like do scotch doubles, liner, alternate shots. And um, there's a video actually on my channel and we get down to the blue. And ben miscues on the blue going up to yellow for the colours clearance. Quite a funny video. We'll go and find it and watch it. Um, but I think that's a, that's a pretty good achievement, that a scotch doubles, liner. Clearance. There's not many players in the league that that could do that, like especially our league. I know me and a guy Scotch doubles. Uh, just having a practice one Wednesday night, and uh, never play with him really. 
uh, we, we were paired up. We had a 63 scotch doubles in a frame. Get a video doing the back to black. Yeah, I've tried it. It's, it's bloody hard, isn't it? I think the best I've done is like three. Yeah, I quite enjoy doing these little world snooker. Um, yeah, you do need a quick table. Bend is quick. It's sort of like match to match table, isn't it? Although I still think it's heated and everything, but the TV tables are much quicker, aren't they? Because of all the TV lighting and that. Quite like the old um, Jesse May speed challenge I did. That was quite enjoyable to do. So, Jatzowski's old frame back one one going into the decider. Let's see what the others are doing. Graham dots down in the second frame, so that's that. We could Purcell 1 0 up. Jack was out, so Jackson Page 1 0 up. So hard betting on snooker, especially accumulate. Thinking of trying Q school two years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's. I don't know if you see... have you seen any of them videos of um, oh, what's his name on YouTube, Jack Foster. He's like a really good player. Well, from his from his videos anyway that I've seen. Um, apparently he he was going to enter Q school he put a comment on one of the videos I don't think he got anywhere just goes to show you you know you can be a really good standard knocking in century breaks but still hard to compete with the big boys in it and then the levels from Q school standard to your trumps and that are just another level again, aren't they? Michael White's in first here for in the decider. Low black into the reds. Think he might be on one here. choice yeah that's the thing isn't it you know they are great players only you only you know yourself if you can compete with them and that Have you played with that that kind of standard of players? Was it yourself that says you practice on the table next to Gary Wilson? Or was that someone else in the chat? He made a nice maxi, didn't he? A few days ago. Yeah, so how do you feel like when when you play that standard of player? Can you hold your own against them? I suppose you can if you've made centuries and that.
thing is when you're playing that type of play, them types of players, you uh, any mistake you make, you just you're just punished, aren't you? That's the thing. They get sentries every frame. It's just, it's not fair, is it? Oh, Michael White's missed it for 48. Balls are wide open here. you got to think. Mazowski. Chance of frame a match here. Thing is, though, you need to play the better players to improve yourself, haven't you? You learn a lot from them. Yeah, you're quite lucky, really, that you've got access to players like that to learn from. I'd love to uh, have the chance to, like, be up close and personal and just see uh, how they go about things. Yeah, I agree with Elliot Slaster. I think it's... He loses his head a bit, doesn't he? But he did well against Ronnie in one of the home nations, didn't he? Not so long ago. Was it last season or season before? But I know he seems to be a bit more... He's had a little baby, hasn't he, not long ago. And he, I think that sort of calmed him, settled him a bit. I think it gives you a new perspective, isn't it? That you know, it's, especially when I had my kid, it's you know, responsibility of that. You know, this is his livelihood, isn't it? So, he wants to support his family, doesn't he? So, I suppose it opens your eyes a bit to take it even more serious. What kind of routines do they do then? Um, I remember you saying that Gary Wilson spent just hours on like a long pot, the same long pot for hours and hours because he wasn't happy with it. But what would, you know, what would their routine be when they first get in the club to practice? Do they? Because I know when you see him on World Snooker and that. Eurosport cover him and they go to the practice room and see him practicing. They're always doing teas, aren't they? I know that's just before a match, probably just to get their arm going. So have I called it? Are we going to get um? Yeah, I like just spreading the balls and seeing what you can make. Might like make quite a few hundreds doing that. Oh no, Jack. Oh. 
Oh, Michael White missed that. <laughs> I suppose it was it was harder than it looked, but I know them tables on them shots on these kind of tables, well pens is just ridiculous. So these are going to be up there. So for those that aren't getting to see this, he's missed like a thin cut into the corner pocket, last red. So Jack's on the colours now. Sort of dodge the bullet here, Jack Lazowski, if he wins this match. Yeah, Jack has escaped a bullet. He did well there. Right, should we jump over to another match then? Um, I think I might jump over to the Jackson Page match. Graham Dot lost 2 0 to Zach Shorty. That is. Well, that's ruined my bet. Yeah, you've got Luca Purcell one nil up. I think he's ahead in the second frame. Dotty, yeah, he lost two nil, mate. It's a bit of a surprise that you'd have thought the scoreline would be the other way round, wouldn't you? It's Andrew Higginson's a bit of a tidy player, isn't he? Do you remember he got to the final of the Welsh one year against uh, Neil Robertson, didn't he? Who's this? Uh, Dotty took on every pot, did he? Oh, Andrew Higginson's just missed a simple blue off the spot. No, actually, um, Midnight Rider. I got a Ronnie O'Sullivan book. That was for Christmas. Not even touched it yet. Um, but it wasn't written by him. Who was it written by? Five Everton. One of these books that somebody's written about him. But, um... I don't read much, to be honest. It's getting time, isn't it?
remember I start, started reading a Tyson Fury uh, book and then Ronnie's book. Which book's that, Glenn? Because um... so I'll look which one I've got. Sure, it's uh, written by Clive. And over again. Got a stick in his mouth. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I see it here now. Uh, that's the one. Simply the best biography. Ronnie O'Sullivan, Clive Everton. Yeah, Clive Everton. I should get into that really. It's called Simply the Best. Yeah, Midnight Ride, I'm not a big fan of Stephen Hendry's commentary, really. I think he can sometimes be a bit condescending. Quite like, like your Dominic Dale, your Alan McManus. They're pretty good, Dave Hendon, especially. Don't like Phil Yates, he's, in the, he's a buffoon, isn't he? Yeah, Glenn, he's got a few, hasn't he? He's got one like Double Kiss, another one called Framed, I think. Um, but I think they're like books that he's written himself. I don't know whether they're like stories or something. I think a running, the one running is an autobiography, isn't it? But I suppose that an autobiography is better than a biography, isn't it? Because it's... Obviously written by himself, the autobiography. Yeah, he's kind of underachieved, Stephen McGuire, hasn't he? He um I remember when he was younger, didn't he get to the final of the UK or something? And they were all tipping him for big things and nothing ever happened, did it? I think his temperament is probably down to his temperament. He can be a bit hot-headed, can't he? He played well last year in the Tour Championship, though. Thoroughly deserved that. Yeah, Ding beat him in last year's... Not the, not the UK, it's just been the one before that, didn't he? I think when he was younger, didn't he lose? Wonder how much he's won actually. Let's have a quick look. That's quite a good. Uh... Steve McGuire title.
I know he swaps his cues around a lot, doesn't he? Won six major ranking tournaments. Oh, he did win the UK in 2004. Yeah, that's it, sorry. When he won that, they were all tipping him for big things, weren't they? He's won six ranking, three minor ranking, two non ranking. Made three maxis, four, five, nine career century breaks. Yeah. Got a bit um bit messy this now, hasn't it? With them I don't know if you guys are watching the Andrew Higginson Jackson Page match. Six reds like surrounding the black. T P that was a quick practice, mate. If I go for a practice, I'm gone for hours. You have to drag me off the table. Now all seven balls surround the table, uh, the black. Yeah, TP, any good? Playing well? Sorry, text in there. Um, table at home made 72 straight blues out of 100. No, that's pretty good, that, isn't it? So you're putting your white on the green or yellow spot, yeah? Just going for blues into corner. You know what, yeah? I don't practice things like that. Maybe I should do. Missed, um... I missed that. I was texting, so I don't know what's happened now with this match. It is all about the cue action, isn't it? Mine's just hit and miss. Remember watching Jackson Page up in the home internationals a few years back. I think it was a year before he turned pro. He was just smashing these other kids to pieces like.
practices a lot with Mark Williams, doesn't he? Yeah, definitely, Glenn. It's uh, it's helping massively. I think give him a couple. It's it's only his first season, isn't it? So let him find his feet, and I reckon he's you know future star. Really, if he keeps at it. Definitely win titles for sure. Yeah, TP, my friend Tony, he was on the stream, actually. Um, he does a lot of streaming for World Snooker and that with the the grassroots sort of um, stuff. Streams like the ladies' events, World Disability, and the European. He went over to Malta to uh, last January. And he streamed all that. But he's thinking of, um, obviously, when it all starts back up and running again. Because he only streams one table. You may have met Tony then, or seen him there on, you know, the main streaming table there with the... Uh, He was the one doing all that, basically. But, um... Hopefully, like, because he only streamed one table, he was thinking of trying to get me on board to go and do, like, another table. When it all starts back up and running again, there might be more streams. Yeah, he's a nice guy, loves his snooker and that. He's, uh, he also's got a good relationship with Sentry, actually, because um, he'd go up to, um, he does the streaming for the home internationals up in Leeds. Sentry sent him, even um, Talisman as well, sent him like hundreds of tips to just give out to the kids. They're trying to get their brand out there. I think still the majority play with Alps, don't they? So these companies trying to compete with them. Get their brand out there. So they just that's why they give us all these tips for giveaways and stuff. Didn't get a chance to play on the live stream table. That's a shame. There was actually a problem with it at one point in the tournament. Um, they needed the fitters out because one of the slates had moved. So I think there was a couple of matches scheduled on there to, to stream. They couldn't uh, use the table. Is Andrew carrying on? He is. Yeah, I suppose it, I don't know what, obviously the standard must be good to, to, for you to enter, so, but yeah, I suppose they want the, the best, you know, the best top players on the stream table, don't they? But it's also nice to give others an opportunity to play on it, isn't it? I forget who won the um, 
Was it um, um Ash? Is it Ashley Hugill? Didn't he win? Yeah, two hours for the best of five. Yeah, Jackson Page, guys, has took that. Going to jump on to Luca Brussel against Brandon Sargent. Yeah, I try to TP. I try to keep up to because Tony like sends me links to when they go live and stuff, and because he knows I love my snooker and that. So I did catch quite a few of the matches. One of the guys in the Welsh actually, he um, he made his one four seven first one four seven in a league match just before lockdown, I think, and. Uh, he was playing over there in Malta. Really good player. Who did he play? He played the, there's a there's a lad that plays with a glove. Scottish lad. Who did he play? Glenn, can you think? Scottish guy plays with a glove. Played him on the live stream table, and I'm sure he beat him actually. Elved Roberts, his name is. The Welsh guy. Ross Muir, that's it. Yeah, he played him. Um, beat him, I think, from what I remember. Is that like a management company, Glenn? Yeah, what does he have like laser eye or something? That was one of cue bowls, that not Luca Purcell long pot. Well attempt. <laughs> Something I need to work on my long games. I'm too hot and cold of it. Some days I can just pop for fun and then next can be miles away. I find that when I do miss them, my back swings the, the days I pot them. I keep my back string quite short. They seem to go in better. And if you're trying to play like a bloody deep screw shot or something, you need your bloody full back swing, don't you? So just 
get some in on the white. Quiet stream, this for um, views. Help if I change the score, wouldn't it, on the uh, on the stream? Yeah, any tips on that for my long game, I'd, I'd appreciate, like, because I just don't think I queue straight enough, and that's why I'm inconsistent with it, because I feel like, it's, you know, you can get away with it to a certain extent when you're in amongst the balls, if you put in a bit of an intentional side on and that, because I do, I do play, like, most shots with some element of side. And um, the consistency is just not going to be there on the long game, is it, when you're doing that? Especially on these um, fine tables like Ben's star table. Because um, we had a lesson in December with Neil Johnson. And he set us up in like one of these rigs. So we put the. Um, Q clamped it into his rig and obviously the Q was dead straight down the line centre of the white and he says right uh, get down on the shot onto the Q and I got down on the shot and I said is that the centre of the white because like when I'm down on a shot that's not what I see but he's miles away from it so what I think is centre of the white when I'm on the shot it's not When it's, I'm talking like just tiny amounts of side that I'm playing with. Especially like if I'm, you know, like your low blacks off the spot into the corner pockets and that, I'll always play them with a bit of help inside. So, you know, if you're on the left side of the table, potting into the right pocket, I'll always play it with a touch of left and opposite for the other side. No, Glenn, I didn't catch that Sean Murphy clip. He played quite well in his group the other day. Liu Hong Hao and um, Zhao Yulong got through yesterday. I think Liu Ho Ho Ha Ho, Ho What's his name? Hong Hao. He topped the group, didn't he? Yeah, Glenn, I think you can just, you can rack your brain, can't you? And I think it comes to a point where you've just got to play your natural game, haven't you? As soon as you start thinking about all these variables and that, you just go to pot. And it's again with your, like, your natural pace round the table as well. So I'm quite a quick player. I always play better when I'm more fluid and not thinking about things. As soon as I start slowing myself down and thinking about shots and playing, I tend to be worse. Yeah, I suppose, like, Sean Murphy, I wouldn't say he's an underachiever because he's won lots of titles, hasn't he? But, yeah, he definitely should have won more. I like, think that he's only won world, one world title, and that was a year he had to come through qualifying, wasn't it? 
that 05 he won. When he's baby faced. So are you guys looking forward to the German Masters then? Starts Thursday. Should be a good one. Be good to have Trump back. Is uh, not the like the biggest of Trump fans, but I kind of missed him in the Masters. What's this thing that helped me with my cue in white on the brown spot? I'll put two balls either side, a few inches apart. Yeah, Glenn, I'll have to try that. It's like you're just trying to play it up and down the spots, aren't you, and keep it on line, but... I don't know, I think... I think I am queuing straight, otherwise I'd, I suppose I'd miss a lot more balls, but I just feel like when I watch myself back on this shoulder here, I need I want it further back out of the way. It's a lot better than what it used to be, because I used to be quite square onto the table and very hunched, where now I'm, I'm, most, I'm mostly open, but still this shoulder is... I want it further back so it's in line with my head and, you know, my elbow straight down the barrel, but struggling to get it even with my body position quite open yeah i'm probably one of my biggest critics really just do kind of analyze probably over analyze stuff really But then again, I've had like good comments on like my head cam videos saying that you know, nice, cute, uh, smooth, straight cueing. So it must be all right for people to comment things like that. So he just starts searching for things, don't you? Yeah, what's your thoughts on the head cam videos, Glenn? Was that the 104 break, straight blue? Yeah, that was like probably nearly two two years ago, that. I think I played down for the black and I ended up straight. And I think there's only a couple of reds either side of the blue left. And there's no way on that slow table I was going to screw this. Straight black with like reverse side up for one of the reds by the blue, so went for the long blue, and yeah, it was a cracking pot to be fair. Yes, I I didn't put enough stun on the last pink going up for yellow, so I ended up on the side pushing, didn't I? And I'd like a horrible, bloody thin yellow. That's one of my highest viewed videos. I think it's done like over 300,000 views. I think that's one of my first um, 
head cam sentries. There's another good one on there. I think it's like 134 total clearance. I think it's a T with a couple of reds either side of the blue. I quite like that drill. That one's on there. Yeah, people do search a lot of head cam vids. Me and Ben should do like a, a head cam match. That would be funny, wouldn't it? It'd take quite a lot of editing, though, to flick between cameras. You couldn't live stream it because you'd have no one to, you know, manage the actual flicking between each other's shots. You'd have to do that after. Yeah, I watch the break from life, guy. To be honest, I'm not a big fan of the shot recreation videos he does. Um, one, you don't know how many attempts he's actually taken to do them. Have you seen the state of his tip, Glenn? Oh, it's disgusting. It's as if he's took it out of the packaging. Popped a bit of glue on it and stuck it on his ferrule. He hasn't done anything with it after that. Like, he hasn't cut it flush to the ferrule or anything, shaped it. It's just disgusting. I'd be embarrassed having a tip like that. <laughs> I'd love to know how good he actually is as well. You know, if you had a match with him. He's clearly like a competent player. I remember, like, he had a he did a sentry head cam, I think it was his second one, and he played some silly shots towards the end. I don't know if he caught it, he had like a simple blue where he should have just stunned it, and then he had the pink into the corner. And he tried to like sort of power stun screw it so he had the, the pink into the middle and he fell out of position and he had a horrible pink into the centre. But you could tell his like nerves were going, you could hear him heavy breathing on the cameras if like it doesn't happen much to him. So he's like dead excited. Yeah, you don't know D until you're actually playing him. And then he wears that stupid hat, doesn't he? Never takes it off. I'd love to know what's underneath it. <laughs> so what's Brussel here? Th 24 behind. Egg in a nest. You need to embrace the old boldness. If you get embarrassed about it, it's like, what's there to be embarrassed about, really? You know, I, I take the make out myself, I do, hence the channel name. Doesn't bother me, but some people it must bother, like. Oof. Whose idea for the name? It was mine, actually. Just a play on words, isn't it? Cue ball, cue bald. Because the channel used to just be my personal account, just Dave Davis and... Um, 
I thought like when I was watching other people's channels, they had like sort of a brand, didn't they? The the channel name wasn't a name. It was same with darts. So I quite like my darts and all these channels have like a channel name, don't they? So just thinking about it. Come quite quite easy really. I told Tony and he was like, Yeah, go with it. Make yourself a logo and run with it. So I did. It was funny, actually, because Ben went to um, Nick Barrow in the summer for um, for some coaching. And uh, Ben was telling Nick, oh, I play a lot with one of my mates. He does. He's on YouTube. He does a lot of head cam videos. And anyway, Nick Barrow goes, is that Q-Bold? <laughs> so even bloody Nick Barrow knew about me. Although I have sent links to Nick before asking him to give us some advice on stuff, so that's probably why. But it was just funny that he recognised the name. I suppose it is quite a memorable name, isn't it? Um, tonight, probably not. I've got a few things to do this afternoon. and Me and the missus are going to watch a film. I want to watch that? Um, don't know if you like Liam Nielsen. You know, like the Taken films. There's a new one out. Well, it was out late last year called Honest Thief. Looks quite good. It's a similar sort of plot to his Taken films. And, um, the trailer looked good anyway, so I think we're going to watch that tonight. Uh, Jar Jar, welcome back, mate. Um, yeah, I'm not allowed to show the actual match now because I've got a bloody copyright strike off YouTube for showing the match in one of my last streams. But I think this is the last game of the morning. Um, so Luca Brissell. He can still win, can't he? Um, black's on the top cush. Green's over the middle. Brandon Sargent nearly goes in off. He pots the green. So he needs a snooker now. 22 on. 25 behind. Yeah, there's been a couple of upsets, actually, this morning session. You had um, Zach Shorty beat... Uh, Graham Dot 2 0. It looks like Brandon Sargent's going to beat Luca Brussel. Basically, I put, I only put like two quid on um, a four way accumulator. So I backed all the favourites. Um, so Brussel, Graham Dot, Andrew Higginson. I thought he would beat Jack, Jackson Page. And. Um, yeah, so two have two have come in, two have let me down. But I just I deposited like some money into my bet three six five so I could watch these matches. It's only reason, so I thought I'd have a little two quid bet. But same as always when I bet on snooker they don't come in. Unless I'm tanked up. But yeah, so Purcell needs one snooker. You've got blue in the middle of the table, brown by the black spot. The black's just underneath on the top cushion. Pink's on the side cushion. He's tried to go behind the pink. But he's left it on into the middle. Yeah. And he's won. Yeah, Glenn, it's not too bad actually. The um 
the prize money for the amount of frames. You know, they're only best of threes at the end of the day, and it's if you can top the group or even come second, you're winning like four grand for a day's work. It's good money, isn't it? Yeah, Jar Jar, he's lost, so not great, really. I don't know when the next session starts, actually. Eleven thirty. Yeah, definitely for the uh, the lower rank, isn't it? It's... Definitely good uh, prize money if they can get up there. So that's all the morning matches finished, guys. Next matches start in a couple of minutes' time, actually. Half 11. Probably going to have to go offline shortly and then make some lunch. Didn't have breakfast this morning, so I'm starving. I think the Luca Brussel and Jackson Page match will be a tasty one. Because they have to mop up the tables, don't they? Clear them up. Um, Michael Jackson Diamond Shoes. Are they the ones that... Remember Jack... Uh, what's his name? Judd Trump used to wear these like shoes that had like spikes on them, didn't he? Yeah, they have to clear the tables and that, don't they? So probably going to end the stream there, guys, because like I said, I've got a few things to do this afternoon. So need to make myself some lunch and that. So I might be back tomorrow. Because I should be going to Ben's for a game tomorrow. So if you're interested in tuning in and watching me try and play the game, I know there's no snooker on tomorrow. This is the last day of the pro series. So maybe tomorrow afternoon I'll uh, stream like a, I don't know, best of seven with Ben or something. But yeah. I'll leave it there then, guys. So thanks for tuning in. And I'll catch you tomorrow. Cheers, guys. Goodbye. See you, Glenn. Sure, mate. Catch you soon.